This is Forza Horizon 2 in my garage. And this are uh, some of the cars I've actually done myself using the vinyl creator and some of the bits are back to front, but that's just one of the things I haven't figured out so that yet. But I've done a few, so here here are some of my cars. Camaro Z28. I took the classic lines down the car and I changed the colours and put different colour layer in and stuff. And I blacked out the wheels, changed them. Big exhaust, racing spoiler. You know, left the roof black to make it look more sinister. But sadly, I couldn't sort that out though. But uh, but also, I blacked out the grills as well down the side of the car, and then I wrapped it in red to make it a bit more dangerous. This one took me forever. Basically, I love the Lotus Cortina, but I've always wanted one in orange and yellow. But you never ever see one on these games in orange and yellow. So, I had to follow the contours of the car. As you see, I had to do that all around the car. Which took me for hours. It took about five hours to do this. I even followed the lines of the cars and I made them a bit less pointy. So they wouldn't sharp as much. So it took me forever. And I changed the wheels to Krieger. I left the bumpers in that obviously because it would just be too sad not to. Didn't put roll cage in, but I did the engine up and then, well, racing Cortina. And then I added the 53. I call this the red pack for obvious reasons. I followed the contours of the car and the side skirts and I filled them in with red. It took me for quite a long while as well. And I did the same at the back and then the other side. But not just that, I added an E-type style front end, which could do a bit tightened up actually, but like you said, an E-type, and then I read it out that, and then I gave it a nice British racing green paint job, blacked out wheels, nice black wing, nice, nice racing thing at the front, and the rest is that, basically. My Quattroporte, I ironed out the wheels and then I followed the contours of the car again, to give it this nice outline of the orange. I also ironed out the grill and stuff behind it using Photoshop to so make it into this awesome looking automobile. Plus, I changed the shape of the wheelbase slightly. Not that you can tell, but uh, it's a few inches shorter than on the normal car. This one I'm most proud of. I added fade over the top of the car paint and then I put the Freely to be 6 BRZ badge on it because this is actually a Freely to be 6 not the usual BRZ you get your hands on and then I did a fade around the car using different colours and stuff to fade it in and then I made a sun using a circle and some random vinyls to just make it, to try to make a sun effect and then I just kept blending colours in all around the car I added like a cheese grater effect on the back and then I just blended lines in to show you the colours I used. This is my BRZ Subaru Art Car. This one took a lot of planning because, well, I was only a little kid when this was on the track, rolling around the rally tracks and stuff. So I had to look for pictures and stuff for the Rothmans Rally XR2 and like pictures of it and stuff. So I basically went on Google, found some, and then I did my best to copy them. I hope you like it because it took me a fucking ever. <laughs> I must have spent about a week doing this car. It took me forever to line everything up properly, so I hope you like it, guys. This is my old 37 replica. This took me a long time as well. Um, I had to color code the wheels, I had to put the body kit on it, and then I had to do, as you can see, quite an extensive amount of vinyling, so I hope people like it because uh, it, takes, it took a lot, a lot of work to do, and uh, I'm quite proud of it, actually. When I had these cars on the game, the GR64 Metro, I was very excited because they're very rare, but also because I remember seeing this car in a museum in, in um, Gaydon called the Multi Heritage Museum Centre, and they had this exact livery on their car. So I got the car on here, once I finally found the bugger, and I basically built the livery from scratch. I added a few other bits, but it's basically as it would be in the factory. 
even down to the modifications. This car is 100% like the original, including the number plate. This was inspired by the Andy Routh Capri. Um, it did race to uh, 2,026 litre, but this one is actually is inspired by his car, which I saw at Darlington Raceway with a mate. Well, an old mate. But um, yeah, so it inspired me so much that when I got back and I finally got this game, I actually built the car closest as I could to his car, so even down to the wheel. This one is my best car. This one is inspired by the Monte Carlo winning car, 177, 153, and a couple of others that were at the same museum as the, as the MG Metro, GR46. But, so it's not my best one, but it's close enough. This inspired me to do this car because back in the days before you had your, you had your Impressors, your Lancers, your Carsworths and all this, you had cars like this, normal everyday family cars, you know, and they used to just take normal everyday family cars, make them into rally cars, and this is actually the livery from one of the Ty Mackinac's winning cars. I bet people, most people don't even realise that this was one of the first cars he ever won in before he was driving a Lancia. People just don't realise, it's a shame. This one took me ages. So this is the uh, this is actually what a rally, a proper rally, Alpine would look like. That there is the original looking Renault badge for the era. That's the bumper, big ass bumper. That's the mad ass looking. See, I have a better view. Mad ass looking, weirdly shaped thingy. There's my house number. And there's the big thing on the front, which you use in rallying, see? So, yeah, this is a proper rally vehicle. Bye, YouTubers.